beautiful day today. A little, uh, little crisp, it's in the mid 50s, but uh, not too bad. So this is the first time I've been on my bike since, uh, since my Florida motorcycle trip. So looking forward to getting out and getting some miles in. It's good not to have the bike so completely loaded down as well. So I've got my panniers, my side cases on, and uh, button that up a little bit. Got my side cases on and basically uh, left my top case at home. Really don't need that. And um, I've got my basic gear with me. I've got my ring gear, I've got my tools. Um, to bring my drone. Don't know if we'll get a chance to fly that or not, but um, never know. Also trying a little different audio setup for today. I've been, uh, as I indicated in my my last video, I've really been frustrated with the on bike audio and trying to get a uh, good, good clean recording. I'm gonna meet my friend at a gas station, uh, so we'll stop there and. refuel if needed. Uh, looks like I've got about three quarters of a tank, so I'm in pretty good shape fuel-wise. Probably grab a cup of coffee, maybe something to eat, and uh, eventually hit the road. And so we're headed down, as I mentioned, to Edisto Island. And there's a really nice uh, restaurant located on Edisto that I've been to a couple of times that uh, always good to Ladies and gentlemen, is lane splitting. And that is not legal in South Carolina, so I wish that gentleman luck. How are you? A little bit of, a little bit of gravel there. Not too bad. So my friend is a new rider. He recently completed the Motorcycle Safety Foundation basic course and after that purchased a Royal Enfield 350 Classic. So he showed me around the bike and he explained the speedometer had to be replaced because of a factory defect. Obviously it's a single cylinder bike, a little bit over 20 horsepower and pretty good bike I think for a new rider. After discussing the ride a little bit I gave him a short briefing on hand signals and then we were off.
After a great lunch at Whaley's, we start heading back. 
I make a recommendation that we stop by an old Presbyterian church that has a long history and a beautiful cemetery around the grounds. Presbyterian Church on Edisto Island is one of the loveliest churches in South Carolina. The congregation is said to be among the oldest, dating to 1685. Though the church itself is built in 1831, people have been interred in the churchyard since 1797. Stones and everything. Uh, a lot of these are from the 1800s. Uh, this one here died 1853. And this one, uh, this is. But this amazes me here. There's a kind of a strange energy behind this. statue in here of a dog and uh, some coins. I'm actually going to put a couple of pennies in here. It was only after I returned back to Charleston and looked up the history of the mausoleum did I find its terrible secret. What I've been able to find out is that Julia Legree was visiting family on Edisto Island in 1852 when she came very ill and fell into a deep coma. 
Julia was pronounced dead and interred in the Legree family mausoleum at the Presbyterian Church. Embalming methods were non-existent during this time, so the deceased were buried rather quickly before they began to decompose. So Julia Legree was placed in the tomb the day she had been pronounced dead, and the mausoleum was sealed. Following the death of another family member two years later, the tomb was reopened for their interment, but behind the crypt door was a shocking discovery of the decayed remains of Julia Legree in her funeral clothes. It was apparent a terrible mistake was made. Julia had been buried alive and awoke from her coma to find herself trapped behind the mausoleum's heavy marble door. Julia's remains were placed back in the tomb, but again and again, family members and caretakers would find the doors to the crypt open. No matter how they tried to reinforce the door, the door would not stay closed. Visit the tomb even now and you'll find an open door. Some believe the ghost of Julia Legree stands guard to make sure she is never trapped behind the doors that claimed her life so many years ago. So, at the end of the day, it was a beautiful ride and beautiful scenery. The bikes ran perfectly. But the story of the mausoleum of the young lady who's buried alive continues to haunt my imagination. Does that explain the strange energy I felt at that location? Maybe, or maybe not. Always trust your intuition.